All right. In this video, we're going to be talking about scheduling your events. So when we go to the events and we click on a new event, I'm going to talk about this top half up here. Of course, the event name could be anything you want it to be. Okay. I, I usually tend to use descriptive names. So when I see that event, it tells me exactly what's about to come up. And I normally put, you know, the days and the, or the week and the time, all of that. That also shows down here when it's flashing. You'll see whatever name you put up here, that's what's going to be down here in the events bar flashing when it's about time to go. Going downwards, we have event type. All right. One time only means you set it. And you set it to this date up here. And this time here. Okay. That's one time only. Repeat by day. This is going to repeat every whichever days you select here. And whatever time, including hours, whatever time you set here. Quick note, if you right click anywhere near these days of the week, if you right click, you get this option to check all, uncheck all, or invert. Invert means, let's say if I had only Wednesday checked and I hit inverse, everybody else would be checked, but Wednesday would be unchecked. So repeat by day gives you the day of the week and the hour. By day and hour. Hour, which is the most popular, you get days of the week and you get each hour of the day. When you choose repeat by day and hour, this hour right here doesn't take effect because it's getting its hour from over here. A lot of times I do zero, zero when I'm doing day and hour. That way, when it shows up in the event list, the zero zero will, will be replaced in the listing. Um, it will be replaced by the actual hour. Let me show you what that looks like. So let's call this event test. And we got repeat by day and hour. And we have that. And let's put just something in here. Or we just say low from a category. We just throw something in there real quick. And I got it set for every hour, right? So we're going to add that event. We're going to refresh. As you can see, the hour was replaced by the hour of the day. That is going to happen. Okay. So that's what I mean by when you go repeat. Uh, let's go. Let's double click on it. When you do repeat by day and hour, I leave that to zero, zero, because it's going to get filled in by these numbers over here. The same thing when you right click in the hours, you can uncheck all, check all, or you can do an invert, inverse. Okay. Manual events is an event that you have to manually do. And you say, well, if it's an event wise manual, well, this adds an additional layer of power to Radio DJ because manual events can be used inside of a playlist. Okay. Also, manual events. Now, to get the manual events, you have to do the plugin from the disabled plugins. You have to go and copy that DLL, and there may be an XML file. I can't remember. You need to copy that out of the disabled folder and paste it into the plugin folder. And of course, you would have to restart Radio DJ for it to take effect. But Emmanuel events are wonderful. When you do the plugin, you're going to get a new tab that says Manual Events. And the Manual Events you create will show up here. And they're just like the carts, where when you push the button, that event takes place. I'm going to tell you what I do with these. I take phone calls, right? Somebody's request, somebody calls, say, I, I would like to request such and such, such, such. I have a, um, a group of manual events 
that will play that person calling in saying, I want to request the song. And then the song comes right behind it. I use manual events to do that. Okay. So that's what the manual event does. It creates an event that has to be done manually, but you can still, you can use an event to trigger a manual event. We have to get into that at another time. Okay. All right. So then after manual events, there's our starter be start up events. Okay. A startup event is just exactly what you think it is. It means when radio DJs, like let's say you reboot the computer, a startup event is an event that will take place as soon as radio DJ, you know, you open it up and it starts playing. I haven't found a use for this yet, but I'm going to have to play with that to find out what is the best thing I can do with that. I do probably one thing could be folder sync. Um, I don't know. I have to play with that one. Because you still have all of the same event options. Okay. You, you still have all of the same. So that's, that's powerful. They give you another level of complexity in terms of what you can do. Okay. Repeat by date. This is one of my favorites. Because we have holidays that hit on a specific date every year whether it's christmas what's another one valentine's day new year's fourth of july if you're in america wherever country you are whatever is a definite date in other words it doesn't move it's always the same date because we have holidays here that move they don't always land on the same date you can set up an event that runs um, by that date. So whatever that event is now, the only drawback is this event only has a one time hit, meaning you schedule it on the date and you schedule the time. But basically this is like, if you want to say happy birthday or something on a particular date, you can do that repeat by date. So every year, this date will run every year on that date. Okay. Then we have date and hour. This is good. Like say, like if I wanted to do um, Christmas wishes or Christmas greetings or something like that on December the 25th. So I would select um, December. 25th and then I, whatever it is I want to happen, you know, I could say I want it to happen every other hour, you know, go through and select every other hour, do the counterpart to below. I like how this hours grid is laid out. However, I wish the zero would have been here, but then I don't know. <laughs> But, and what you would do, like I would make this zero, 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 zero. And let's say I wanted this to happen 15, 15 minutes after the hour. That's how I would do it. Zero, zero, 15, zero, zero. So on this date, December the 25th, when you give it a name, every other hour starting at 1 a.m., I want you to do whatever event actions I have down here. So that's good for Christmas greetings or whatever you <laughs> can come up with. All right. So those are your event types. One time, repeat by day, repeat by day and hour, manual, startup event, repeat by date, repeat by date and hour. Very powerful options there. The event category is basically just organization. It will not have any effect on what happens to the event. The event category is basically just an organ organization thing, right? So if this was to change 
the rotation, right? Let's say I call it lat low jazz rotation. And I might say Monday through Friday, 5 p.m., right? So it's repeat by day and hour. So it's Monday through Friday. So I'll remove Saturday and Sunday. I will remove everything except 5 p.m., which is 1700. And because I created a category called rotations. I want to save that in rotation because I want it to be pretty much, you know, I don't, I don't have a rotation code, but I just want to show you that's how you would do it. Um, because I want it to be at the top of the hour and I want to do it Monday through Friday. And I just want to save it in the rotation. So let's see what happens when I hit that. I hit, well, I got to have an event action first. Let's put that back in there. Hit save. Okay. Now, when I go over here and say individual events, we see all the events, but what if I just want to see all of my rotation events? When I select that, it's going to show me all the rotations that are stored in the category called rotations. So that's the only thing um, that that's for. That's the only thing the event category for is so that you can organize your events because you're going to see. I've, I work on one station. This guy has over 300 events. I mean, really? And I'm like, Good God. <laughs> so it would behoove him to create categories and organize those events. So, you know, he can just, <laughs> just get to it quickly, but that's the only purpose of event category. It doesn't have any effect on what happens to the event. Below all of that, of course, is the enable and disable. So you don't have to delete the event. You just disable it. You may decide to use it later. We already looked at what the hours are. If you're doing it by day and hour or day and hour, it only looks at minutes and seconds. All the, the other ones, then the whole time, whole event hours looked at. Smart timing is something I think is experimental. I'm not sure if it completely works, but smart timing is supposed to try to fit whatever it picks below. It tries to make it, it tries to pick files, the length of them fit inside that 60 minutes. So let's say I got an event that runs at 45 after. It's going to try to make sure whatever it picks will fit in that 15 minute window before the top of the hour. That's what smart timing is. All right, so that's the video on these scheduling settings up at the top. Give you some flexibility. There are some things that I wish it could do that it doesn't do. But all in all, this is a very comprehensive type of scheduling. But I get done everything I need to get done from this one event. Radio DJ rocks. And if you're not using Radio DJ, I'm going to implore that you do. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.